Welcome back to Hypercritical Reviews, the only show that hypercritically reviews everything, including video games, because I'm really passionate about them and I play a lot of them. Today, we're looking at Sonic X Shadow Generations. To start off, this is a big shock. Er, um, normally, I don't even really like Sonic games, nor feel passionately enough about them to uh, review them. And then this one came out. And at first, uh, I played Sonic Generations, because I haven't since I was a kid. And I enjoyed my time. I thought the controls were a little clunky, and they weren't as clean. And then I played the Shadow portion and said, never mind, I'm just bad at the game. Because the Shadow portion was fan-freaking-tastic. Uh, if you don't know, Sonic X Shadow Generations is basically a remake of the old Sonic Generations, but it's better and there's some rewrites and stuff. And then on top of that, you have Shadow Generations, which is basically, where was Shadow during Sonic's story? And it pretty much, you just follow Shadow's story. And that's mainly what I'm going to be taking a look at today, because it's easily the best thing that Sonic Team has made. Probably ever. Um, other Sonic games, like Sonic Forces, and, uh, I mean, pro Sonic, wasn't Sonic Forces, like, the most recent one, I guess, if you don't count Team Sonic Racing, or Sonic Superstars, uh, Sonic Forces was, a, like, a, a tearjerker, because it was terrible. I played it, I didn't have that much fun, I mean, there was the occasional stage that was like, oh, that was cool, but then it was over. Um, you could get a lot of those stages done in a minute. And it was so automated, it was so boring, it was so... And that was it. But uh, they said, oh, we hear your critiques. We're going to actually work on this game. And they did. I was shocked. They took everything that like everyone had complained about and they fixed it. Even just starting off with the story. Um, it's not perfect. In fact, some of the dialogue comes off as cringy to me, but I'm also like an intense movie person, so this being for a game and for the Sonic series is probably the least edgy and cringy thing that they've made in forever. And a lot of it actually makes sense, and there's good beats with the dialogue and the characters, and they actually have motivations other than friendship! <coughs> so that's very nice. Um, but truly, what stands out the most is the level design. Uh, oh my god, they just said, yeah, we're going balls to the wall with this one because it's actually one of, it, it's crazy. Every single level has about three portions to it, and all of those level, all those portions have like 15 different ways to go somewhere, and all of them are satisfying and fun and fast. And this game, like, actually makes you feel fast. The, like... God, I love the Kingdom Valley stage. It's like five minutes long, which is long for the series. And it's like long for a game where you're going fast the entire time. Like usually they're only about three minutes. This was a whopping five because there's like three big segments. And like they they use everything to their power very well. So like you'll be on an eagle and it'll take you to the next session. There's also like doom powers that Shadow has that allow for different allow for variety in the gameplay so it's not just homing, attacking, and boosting the entire time. It's like they took everything they learned over the 90, like, terrible Sonic 3D games that came out besides Generations, ironically, and it, like, they, they just took everything they learned and then they put it into one game. So, like, there's variety in the gameplay that doesn't suck. The controls are, like, interesting and there's they're fun. The progression is 10 times better. The open zone like thing that they took from Frontiers, they put into this game as well with the hub world. And so the hub world's actually interesting and you have to go through it and you have to do stuff. And it's like, wow, I have more than just a white null void to walk around. Or wow, I have like stuff to do. There's also challenges that you can do a part of the thing, a, a part of the game. Like, and it's like the same levels. It's like segments of those levels, but there's a challenge to it. So, like, you have to collect a certain amount of rings. But with the Sonic one, I found myself raging because these were so tedious and annoying, and you have to do them for the bosses. Uh, these ones are the same way. You have to do the challenge stages to get to the bosses, but they're actually fun, and they're fun, they're interactive challenges, and, like, you want to do good with these challenges. Like, some of them are, like, reach the goal in 30 seconds. Like, how do I do that? And then, like, you have this chaos control power that stops time and literally it makes it fun because now this game is fun to speed run and now this game is fun to play <laughs> it's just fun to play the mechanics all finally work together 
And so, it, God, they better have another game on the way because I'm like, wow. I mean, this was five hours, but like this, the replayability make like I I, sp- <laughs> I spent like probably another five hours just speed running Kingdom Valley because I love that level. Um, it's so fun. It feels so good to play which is something that none of the other Sonic games really had, besides maybe Generations. But even then, like, when I was playing Generations now, I was like, I I cannot control you, you're too fast. Whereas with Shadow, I had, I felt like I had 100% control almost 100% of the time, and when I messed up or something went wrong, it was because it felt more like it was my problem and not like the movement didn't move. And that was a huge problem with Forces, was the movement was clunky and stiff. And with generations, it's too fluid, so it feels like like I'll move like this, and I'll go like that, and I'll it has it's like momentum based, but in the weird way where it doesn't feel right. I did not have this problem with Shadow Generations. Now the difficulty spike by the time you get to like the end <laughs> is kind of crazy. Like I was dying all the time, and I was getting consistent C ranks. So like you have truly, it's like Sunset Heights is like the last level that feels like like in the perfect zone and then you get to chaos island and it's a little bit it's a lot more it feels a lot more difficult and that could just be because the squid feels not very fun to control but also like this is nitpicking it's also one of the cheapest games on the market right now it's 50 bucks and you get the full port of sonic generations and you get shadow generations which i feel like is worth it anyway um because there's so much replayability in these levels and there's so much love and care that goes into them and the animation is great the transitions from animated and cinematic cutscenes back to the level are seamless and they don't feel forced or like they're just trying to drag runtime into the level like they feel they actually add something to the experience and they add to the atmosphere and they kind of add to the character a little bit too and like shadow you kind of see his powers in action and stuff like that and the doom wing is fun especially in the 2d sections like, I had a lot of fun, like, navigating the Doom Wing through the 2D sections because it felt so fluid and nice. They really gave you everything that you could want to be creative with your movement in this game. Again, unlike all the other Sonic games, like, you can do just about anything. Like, there's a there's a part in Kingdom Valley that I just skipped by using Chaos Control, and... I like skipped a whole segment and then I skipped a whole nother segment and now I'm like top 30 in the world in the speed runs, at least according to the online mode on my Xbox. That could be very, very different now. I mean, this is a huge, huge improvement from Sonic Team and I'm really looking forward to if they do this again because truly, if they take what they learn from this one and apply it to the next one, then we're set because they it's like they finally got what was fun about the levels in Frontiers and then they applied that to this game, and then they applied it even more with everything else they learned. And it, it just felt like the culmination of like years and years of failures into something actually good. Very great experience. I personally would buy this game if I were you, if you have $50. Um, $50 is not cheap. I mean, maybe you might wait to get it cheaper if you're looking to just get like the shadow portion. But I mean, if you've never played Generations, get the game. Just get the game. Because you're not going to find anything else cheaper for as much fun as this game's going to give you. And that's how, what I've always liked about Sega, is they don't overcharge you. I mean, Sonic Forces was like $15, <laughs> so they knew what they did wrong. Overall, I'd give this about an 8 out of 10. So, yeah. Alright, that's, that's all for today. So, I'll uh, see you in the next Hypercritical Review. Bye for now.